Good morning. My name is Cindy Milne Wren, and I'd like to invite you or welcome you to Wesley Knox United Church. Whether you're here in person or joining us in the service online, we are very happy to have you with us here today. If those of you, um, any of you, have announcements that you'd like to share with the congregation, please come forward now. Always pays to sit near the front. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everyone online. I bet that all through COVID you were thinking, will I ever be able to go to a Broadway with a twist show again? And the time has arrived. If you don't know what Broadway with a twist is, it's a fabulous all Broadway production using some of London's finest musical theater performers. You'll recognize some of our cast members like um, Denise Pelly, our own Hannah Hayworth. Um, who am I missing? Oh, all the music's done by our own Brian Ratcliffe. And my favorite performer, and nobody ever bumps her out of this spot, but Emma Ratcliffe will be performing as well. Um, as a mom, I get to say that. It's on May 15th. I know it's a very busy day, but why not end your day with a concert that's free? This year, because of COVID, we've decided to follow how Arts for All Kids works, and that's what this concert's in support of, the London Food Bank's Arts for All Kids program, providing free fine arts lessons for children and youth in London who can't afford them. We decided we would open the doors. We will give you an opportunity to donate if you are able to, but if you have been struck by COVID and it has hit you financially, this is your opportunity to come and enjoy an evening with us, to feel, to laugh, to enjoy the company of the people that you're with. It's at Wolf Performance Hall, 7.30. If you would like a ticket, you go to our website, Arts for All Kids, the number four for the word four, and you reserve your seat. You can pick where you sit this year. So please come and join us. It's a fabulous thing. And don't you want to hear Hannah? Like, she's awesome. So we're really appreciating that. So come and join us. The price is right. Thanks. On Sunday, May 15th at 2.30 p.m., Wesley Knox United Church will host a special ecumenical service to which we are inviting our congregation, members of other churches, and the community at large. This will be a time to reflect on and acknowledge all that we have lost during the pandemic of the past two years. It has touched virtually every aspect of our individual lives, our families, our friends, and our colleagues. The losses may include people, jobs, health, savings, activities, gatherings, entertainment, hobbies, services of those in need, and so on. Also, it will be a time to restore our sense of well-being, to begin to rebuild our lives, to imagine new ways of being in community, and to join with those of like-minded spirit. The service will be led by Abiel and clergy from various churches in London and will include special music from the Wesley Knox Senior Choir. Please mark the occasion uh, on your calendar and give yourself the time and space to participate in this important service. The service will be live streamed for those unable to attend in person. Good morning, my name is John McFall. I'm the Chair of Leadership Council. And this is a reminder that we've been in the process of getting feedback on whether we should relax our proof of vaccination mandate um, as of May the 8th for worship services. As of April the 28th, we relaxed the mandate for church use in the sense of rentals, committee meetings, groups, individuals doing volunteer work. It wasn't clear to council whether we should relax it for worship services. So we put a poll survey into the newsletter. We're inviting you to speak to one of the counselors, uh, send me an email. 
There is uh, paper forms on the table in the narthex where you can check off whether you agree, disagree. Your feedback is appreciated, uh, and in the next, few, next couple of days, Council will make the decision regarding next Sunday, May the 8th, whether we will continue to require vaccination or not. So have your say, let us know how you feel. Thank you. And as we enter our time of worship together, we light the candle to remind us that Christ is with us in this time of worship. We also acknowledge that the territory that we're on is the traditional lands of the Eshnebek, Haudenosaunee, Lenapewak, and Ottawandrans peoples. Please remain standing as you're able and join together with the call to worship. Sing praises to God, you people of faith. Praise God who transforms us, who heals and loves us. Do not be silent. Praise the Lord.
Let's, let's say together our opening prayer. Wisdom of God, come and dwell among us. We gather to hear your word and to sing your praise. We come as we are trusting that your grace will perfect us. Interrupt our lives with your vision of truth and love. We praise you now and always. Amen. This morning marks a, I would say, a big change in our worship experience here at Wesley Knox. And I'm very excited to be able to introduce to you our new hymn book, More Voices. This wonderful collection, there's 225 new songs in here. It's a diverse and ecumenical collection that conveys a new understanding of God for the 21st century. A God of inclusion, calling each of us to a new ethic of concern, not only for each and every human being, but for all living things, and also for our biosphere, Mother Earth. As with Christian songs for 2,000 years, the More Voices collection calls us to fulfilled worship through reflection, sacrament, and deed. On the cover of this book, you see a, an artistic representation of the burning bush. In Exodus, the story of Moses when he was called by God to lead the, the Israelites out of Egypt. God appeared in a burning bush, which was a bush that was burning, but it wasn't being consumed. So God spoke to Moses out of this bush, just as God speaks to us out of our new hymn book. So who are the more voices that are going to be represented in our book? More global worship material so that we are at one with our sisters and brothers around the world. More voices for children and youth. More voices from the contemporary Christ Christian music scene. Those who celebrate Christian spirit, I'm sorry, those who celebrate creation spirituality. Those who express lament and inner pain. And more Canadian voices than have ever appeared in any worship resource. If we take our book, it's different from, just as an introduction to how it's constructed, it's different from our Voices United, which is, as you know, arranged liturgically for the year. So it starts with Advent, and it goes to Christmas, and Epiphany, and so on, and then gets into subjects like praise and nature of God and, and different things like that. Well, this one is different. It is arranged according to the worship service. So if you take a look at the beginning, like somewhere between 1 and 25, number 1 and 25, you'll see at the very top of, the, of each page, gathering, centering, and invocation. So those are the hymns that are specifically intended to, now you can use anything you like, of course, but those were intended to be gathering hymns. The second section is praise, and that is, you know, 30-ish, you know, round in there. And then the next section is confession and lament and healing, our inner spiritual life. Uh, where we come close to God. And then the next uh, section is assurance, assurance of God's love and pardon. The next section, which is, I'm at 119, so I'm kind of flipping through. Um, the word, um, gospel, scripture, the word of God. And then the next one, which is in the 140s or so, is our response, our response to God's word. The next section is uh, offering and thanksgiving, and that starts like 180s or so. And notice that they left out sermon. They didn't put that one in. I'm not quite sure why, but they didn't. Um, the next one is uh, communion in the, in the 190s. And the next one is 
in the, what do I got here? 2010, 2010, <laughs> 2009, 09, I'm, I'll get it straight. Um, going forth, okay, our commissioning. And then after that, and that's, and that's kind of the end of the organization. So different groups, when you want to use this resource in your meetings or small worship devotional um, uh, moments, uh, can choose what sort of focus that you want to have for your group and, and go to that uh, section in order to find something that's appropriate. Uh, toward the end, if you take a look at, and this will help you too, which is always important. If you take a look at page 274, that's the little numbers at the top, 274, you will see a section called scriptural references, which is wonderful. There, there you, you find a scripture passage and it gives you suggestions of, uh, of the hymns in this book that will go with those scriptural passages. Uh, the next one, is on page 278, and this is categories, and, and church year, so not, I mean, it's arranged for worship organization, but it also has applications for Advent, Lent, Easter, that sort of thing, and, uh, and other um, categories like inclusiveness, inspiration, interfaith, health and wellness, Holy Spirit, Etc. And then finally, on page 286, we find, oh, what is that hymn? Well, it's the first lines and titles. So if you can think of that, um, you're good to go. If you can't, um, God will help you find something <laughs> that's appropriate. Uh, so what I'd like to do, there's also uh, a, a vast, a, a huge variety of hymn types. And so there's traditional hymns, and then there's short responses, which we have not used in our worship service um, all that much up till now. But uh, I'd like to start to maybe bring some of those in. So if you take a look, you just had number one, right, which is, you know, we know that very well. Take a look at number two, and you see a, a hymn on number two called Come All You People. And it's both in the Shona uh, language and in English. And there's lots of things we can do with that. So I thought it would be fun if we could learn that today. It won't take long. It's pretty simple. And then in following weeks, we can add to it and enhance it and just kind of, you know, find the energy. There's lots and lots and lots of energy in this book, which is really exciting uh, to just anticipate bringing into our worship space. So I'll play through it. And the choir will sing through it, and then we'll all sing through it two times, and then we'll be good to go in the following weeks. And I need to tell you that I am not playing the postlude today. I couldn't learn it in time. So you'll hear something else. And you'll hear the postlude next week. OK.
is a, a, a choice of addressing God at the very end. We can say your Lord or our Lord or your God. And I invite you to sing whichever one brings God closer to you. Friends, we present these hymnals to the glory of God and for the service in the life of Wesley United Church. We dedicate them for use in the singing and to glorify God. I would ask you now to hold one of your books and just raise it up. Let us pray. Eternal and loving God, we thank you for the music and the gift of song through which we offer praise and thanksgiving, our confessions and petitions, and our sorrows and laments. We give thanks to you for all those who have contributed to this hymnal, the authors, composers, arrangers, and translators who give us the words and the music to express the thoughts and the emotions that may otherwise have remained silent. We give you thanks for the lives and witnesses of those in whose honor and memory these hymnals have been given. We pray that these hymnals may be used in worship, in education, in outreach, in nurture, in fellowship, and in faithfulness. Now, Holy One, we concentrate them and our lives to your service through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you.
invite those who are young or young at heart to come join me up front because I need some help teaching the adults something. All right, great to see you all. I'm going to grab a couple of slices. You want to grab a slice of paper and a writing utensil. I'll explain what this is all about. So you heard Mike talk about this service happening in two weeks and how the last two years have changed our lives. And in the service, we want to acknowledge the things we don't have or the things that we lost during that time. So my invitation for you to help the adults understand this uh, liturgy we're trying to create is for you to think about, you can either write it on a slice of paper or just think, think it into the slice of paper, uh, things that you've lost. So an example, uh, my aunt died during COVID. We didn't get to celebrate her life. That's something I missed during those past two years. So I want to write my aunt on this. I'm going to fold it up, crumple it up, and I'm going to put it in the box. Something else that I missed out on during COVID is my hockey team. I couldn't play hockey. I missed my recreation time. I missed my hockey team. I missed my friends. I couldn't play the way I used to. And it didn't help with the, uh, it didn't help. <laughs> so if there's something you can think of, I invite you to throw it on a slice of paper and, uh, and put it in this nice little pillar. If you can't, that's fine. You can do it at another time. We'll have this out for the coming weeks until we get to the 15th. Um, and so adults, that's your invitation uh, to, to do this as well. I'd, I'm not sure where the basket's gonna be be stored, but for now, I'm going to put it right here on this chair. Um, and again, if you can't think of something or you don't want to write it down, think it into the slice of paper and put it in. Thank you for your help for uh, showing the adults how we want to do this. Uh, I'm going to light the candle that we bring upstairs with us. Anyone want to carry it? Gareth carried it last week, so I saw Renee's hand go up quick. Do you want a rock, paper, scissor for it? She can have it all okay. Okay, so Renee will carry it, and then we'll say, we'll say our prayer together after I get this lit. And Youth Quest is meeting with Cindy, right? Susan and Brad today, sorry, yes. Uh, in the chapel. Okay, so Renee, you can have the candle, and let's say this prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. Good morning. The first reason, reading is from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The second reading is from John chapter 21, verses 1 to 19. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. And they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood 
on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it all in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. Now this was the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him for the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said third time, do you love me? And then he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go out wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me.
1985, I was a student at the Taiwan Theological Seminary in Taipei, studying for a master's degree. And one of the things that we did as students is to watch movies. And one of the movies that I watched in 1985 was The Fiddler on the Roof. Now this morning, I just want to share with you a very tender and moving scene in the movie. Tivei and his wife Olga are forced to move from their home in Russia. And one day, Tivei comes to the house and asks his wife, Golda, do you love me? Do I what? Do you love me? Golda looks at him, then responds, Do I love you? With our daughters getting married, and this is troubling in the town, you are upset, you are worn out. Go inside, go lie down, and maybe it's in the indigestion. Tevni interrupts and asks the question again. Golda, do you love me? Golda sighs as she looked at him and says, do I love you? For 25 years, I've washed your clothes, cooked your meals, cleaned your house, given your children milk cows. After 25 years, why talk of love right now? Tevi answers by saying, Golda, the first time I met you, it was at our wedding. And I was scared. I was shy. I was nervous. So was I, said Golda. But my father and mother said, would learn to love each other. And now I'm asking, Golda, do you love me? Do I love him? Golda sighs. For 25 years, I've lived with him, fought with him. 25 years, my bed is his. If that's not love, what is it? Then, you love me, Tevi asks. I suppose I do, she says. And I suppose I love you too, he says. It doesn't change a thing, but after 25 years, it's nice to know. Do you love me? It's the question that Jesus asks Peter when he showed himself for the third time by the Sea of Tiberias. The disciples have gone back to the jobs they know, which is fishing. But once again, friends, they fish, they catch nothing. They fish, they catch nothing. And Jesus shows himself to them and says to them, cast the nets on the other side. This is what Jesus does. When things are not working, Jesus would ask us to cast the net 
on the other side. Maybe things will work. If things are not working in your life, this morning Jesus is asking you to ask, cast the net on the other side. Maybe if you cast the net on the other side, you will catch something. And the disciple recognizes Jesus. Particularly the disciple that Jesus loved. Recognize him. And he says, it's the Lord. And scripture says, Peter put on clothes because he was naked. And he went to Jesus. And scripture says, there was breakfast ready for them of fish and bread that Jesus prepared for them. And they finish eating. Jesus enters into this conversation. Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And Peter responds, yes, Lord, you know, I love you. I love you very much. You know I've given my life to you. I love you. Jesus is coming to Peter in a caring fashion. Jesus doesn't say to Peter, you, Peter, denied me three times. You, Peter, refused to say, you know me. You denied me. Jesus doesn't do that. comes to him in a caring fashion. Do you love me more than this? Do you love me more than this, Peter? And Peter answers, Lord, you know everything about me. Friends, Jesus knows everything about us. And this morning, he comes to us in a caring fashion. He cares for us. He loves us. He cares for us. He accepts us as we are. He doesn't condemn us. He just comes to us and cares for us and asks us a question. Do you love me? This is what Christ is asking us this morning. Do you really, really in your heart love me? And Peter says, you know everything about me. And this morning, friends, I'm saying, Jesus knows everything about us. Jesus knows our sinfulness. Jesus knows our recklessness. Jesus knows our anger and frustration. And Jesus this morning is coming to us in a caring fashion. Remember, this is Peter's ministry. And friends, Peter's ministry is our ministry. Peter's life is our life. Peter's actions are our actions because we are all redeemed by the Holy Spirit. So this is why this morning when he asks, do you love me? He's not really asking Peter alone, but he's also asking us.
Second, we see Jesus coming with a love that is forgiving. He comes with a love that is forgiving. Jesus comes caring, but Jesus also comes with a love that is forgiving. He forgives Peter for all the things he had done. He forgives Thomas for doubting him. He forgave Paul when he met us in Damascus. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, who are you? Who are you? And Jesus says, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. I am Jesus, who are treating bad. He comes to us in a forgiving spirit. Jesus comes to us in a forgiving spirit. Jesus doesn't count the recklessness that we did. He just comes because he loves us. He just comes because he cares for us. He just comes because he wants to send us. He's sending us this morning, he says, if you love me, feed my sheep, tend my sheep, educate my people, be there for them, love them, care for them, be present at all times. This is what Christ is saying to us. Be present at your homes. Be present at all the times. A story is told of a man who lived a reckless, reckless life. And he was in the hospital dying. And a priest had visited him. And this man says to the priest, I'm dying. And the priest says to him, yes, I know you are dying. And the man says to the priest, does he love me? Does God love me? And the priest says, God loves you. God loves you. And then the priest reads from a prayer of the rites of the Catholic Church. He read the prayer that says, God loves you and God accepts you. Your sins are forgiven. You belong to God. You are now with God. This is Christ that is best. Christ has forgiven us for all the mistakes we have done. He's forgiven us. And he is forgiving us now. What we need to do, my friends, is just to say the, the words, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Yes, Lord, you know everything about me. You know everything about me. You know when I'm sleeping, when I'm awake. You know me when I get out and I come in. You know me. You know everything about me. You know my heart. You know my spirit. I love you. So, my friends, this morning, I come to you with a humble heart. I come to you as a sinner myself. I'm come to you not as the best person in the world. But I'll come to you to share that if you say, yes, I love you, then Jesus will say to you, tend my sheep, feed my sheep, 
care for my people, be present always. So friends, Jesus' love is forgiving. Jesus' love is caring. So this morning, we thank God for all the things he has done for us. We thank God for life. And in life, in death, in life beyond death, we're not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Gratitude for gratitude is the best attitude. I received one note. It reads, giving brings a smile to the soul. When you give, it's a joy of happiness comes over them. This morning, I just want to say some words of gratitude for the opportunity that this congregation has given me to go to a meeting at the mosque last Sunday and to celebrate with other church leaders and to give a little speech, even though the speech was about three minutes. But it was a pleasure to see how we are respected. And we are respected because we invited Sheikh Anwar to come and talk to us. And we appreciated his teaching. The respect they showed me and Caroline was out of this world. So thank you very much for that opportunity. This is why I thank God for all the things he has done for us. Wesley Knox, we are on the move. We are moving. We are moving. We are going forward. Things are happening in this church that are wonderful. And we want to thank God for that. We are moving. If you are not sure, please, can you come to me? I'll tell you we're moving. We are moving. We are getting somewhere. We are moving. On the 15th of May, 
we have an ecumenical service of about 15 churches and about five ministers who have agreed to be part of the service. We are moving. This is our story. And I'm really thankful for that. So why don't we accept our offerings this morning? Our offering, please. Redeeming God, we live in a world that is far too ready to say that you can't be found. Ready to choose punishment over mercy, judgment over compassion. Our world is too eager to put energy into exclusion rather than working to be inclusive of all your children. We confess to you that like Saul, we have been blind, even in our sighted, sightedness, to what you are doing in the world. We need our eyes to be truly open, Lord, to who you really are. Let our blindness fall away and let us see the good that we can do through our prayers, through the presence, through gifts, service, and our witness. To help us usher in your kingdom here and now, may the gifts we give this morning be just the beginning of our availability to be your tools for bringing about the world you desire. We pray it in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Let us now pray for the people of the world. Eternal God, three in one and one in three, we give thanks for the countless faithful believers who down the centuries have communicated the good news of Easter so that we believe today. We give thanks for those who are prepared to speak out at the countless injustices they see against tyranny, greed, discrimination, inequality, and all the isms. At what cost, we only guess. We give thanks for those who open their hearts and homes to refugees along the borders and across continents. This morning, Almighty God, we give thanks for Wesley Knox Faith Community, its leaders, its committees, its youth and children. This morning we pray that the climate change predictions will be understood for what they mean, not what governments want to, us to believe they mean. As scientists map coral reefs in the Caribbean. We pray this morning that we genuinely try to alleviate the existing threats of global warming as South Africa and the Philippines cope with destructive flooding, that those in your authority, from police to politicians, 
from multinational retailers to multinational haulers come to understand that there is no law which they are not subject to. That those who seek to take advantage of Russia's war by illegally mining the Yanomani indigenous territory are held for immediate account. That Irish travelers suffering the worst discrimination and racism in Europe are acknowledged and supported. That you, the God of peace, may be seen in Jerusalem. We are grateful that we can see you in the multiple acts of kindness we experience from friends and strangers. We are grateful for those who put their lives in, in risk to document war crimes, diffuse landmines, and care for the injured. We are grateful, Creator, for Jesus and through the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. By his actions, we can pray for an entire created world. When you ask us a question, do you love me? Jesus, this morning we say, yes, you know us and we love you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with the wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet and may everyone who meets you see the face of Christ in you. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.